Hi, I'm Sharon Macklis, Director of Editorial Data and Analytics at IDG Communications. I'm here with Episode 10 of Do More With R, R Markdown in Less Than 6 Minutes. Let's say you've done an analysis, but now you want to share it, which means you probably want to add some sort of explanation and context. If you've never used R Markdown before, you're in for a treat. R Markdown lets you combine text, graphics, and embedded R code into a single document. That R code can just be displayed, but not actually run. The code can also be run to create a chart or graph or statistical model. If you run the code, you also get to decide whether you want your viewers to just see the results of your code or your code too. You can turn an R Markdown document into an HTML file, a slideshow, a PDF, even, yep, a Microsoft Word doc. Let's take a look. In R Studio, if you go to File, New Document, you'll see an option for R Markdown. So let's do that. and see what happens. You are asked if you want a document, a presentation, a Shiny application, or a document from template, either built in or your own. Document offers defaults of HTML, PDF, or Word. Presentation means slideshow. Brand new as of August, RStudio's preview release supports PowerPoint. I'll get to that in a bit. But let's stick to HTML document for now. I'll name this test. Here's the default that shows up. That first part is the header between the sets of three dashes. This is in a format called YAML, Y-A-M-L. In addition to the title, author, and date, it sets the output as an HTML document. Next, see the area in gray between the two sets of three backticks? That's an R code chunk. The first line between the braces says that the language is R. You can run other languages in an R Markdown document too, like Python or SQL. Next is the name of the chunk, in this case setup. A name isn't required, but you can have one. After that comes any chunk options. Include equals false means run code in the chunk, but don't include it in the final document. That makes sense for this chunk, since it's just setting up options for the rest of the file, so we don't need it in our final output. That next line is setting an R Markdown option for the whole document. Echo equals true means display all the code as well as code output in the final document. Outside of chunks, you can just type normally. One, two, or three pound signs at the start of a line sets headline size. Two pound signs at the start of a line are equivalent to an HTML H2 headline size, if you're familiar with that. Two asterisks on each side of a word makes it bold. You can see two other R chunks here. One just runs the summary function on the car's data set. The other generates a plot. See that echo equals false option in the pressure chunk? That says, don't display the code, just the results of the code. If you actually read the text in this default R Markdown document that RStudio generated, it explains a few more things about the file. To get an HTML document from this, Click that Knit button here. You'll first need to save the file as a .rmd file. I'll call it Test. And now I'll knit it again. You can see the HTML here, but let me open it up in a browser so you can see it a little bit better. We can see that the R code is included in the first chunk, but not in the second chunk, because we said echo equals false in that second one. There's a lot more you can do with R Markdown. For example, these little green arrows let you run one individual chunk and see the results. Check out rmarkdown.rstudio.com for a lot more about R Markdown. Before I wrap up, I want to show you how to generate a PowerPoint from R Markdown. Reminder, this is new as of August 2018. So as of early September, you need the preview release of R Studio for this to work. 
and also the latest version of the R Markdown package from CRAN. Make sure you have that by running install.packages R Markdown in case you have an older version of that package. Now let's create a new R Markdown slideshow document. I will go to File, New File, R Markdown, and this time I'll choose Presentation and PowerPoint. Do a test PowerPoint, whoops, and hit OK. Here's the file that you get automatically. I'm going to hit the Knit button to see what happens. I'm going to save that. I saved the default and knitted it, and here's my PowerPoint. Seriously, how cool is that? So let's take a look at the default document to see what happened. What makes a new slide? Whatever the first headline is, remember that's any line starting with one or more pound signs followed by regular text. That becomes the signal to generate a new slide. Same for adding new slides. You can add images to an R Markdown document by starting a line with an exclamation point, followed by brackets for the caption and parentheses for the file name. Let me show you that here. Starting a line with an exclamation point, brackets for the caption, and here's the name of the file. Notice it's not in parentheses. Now I'll hit knit. And you can see, here's the image. You can use Knitter's cable function to make a table, too. Here I'm doing a table of the first four rows of the MT Cars data set. I'll knit that. Here's my title slide, my image slide, and now my table slide. There is a ton of customization you can do with R Markdown, like adding your own CSS to HTML documents and using your own templates for PowerPoint. If you're interested in doing more with this, do check out RStudio's R Markdown resources. Again, that's rmarkdown.rstudio.com. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more R tips, head to the More With R video page at go.infoworld.com slash morewithr. That's https go.infoworld.com slash morewithr, all lowercase except for the R. You can see you'll end up here. Or you can add the Do More With R playlist to your YouTube library. So long, and hope to see you next episode.